Let's see, purple stuff, soda, oh, title queen at the movies during Oscar season, I'm having that. I never know what to say, I never know what to say, Charlie, I know what to say to you, come in. Tie it all queen at the movies. Johnny, I wanted to do another film noir, mm. so I chose one of my all-time favorites from 1944, Billy Wilder's classic version of James M. Cain's Double Indemnity, starring Fred McMurray, Barbara Stanwyck, and Edward G. Robinson. Now, this film was based on a novel by James M. Cain, who was a classic pulp novelist from the 30s. He had written The Postman Always Rings Twice, Double Indemnity, Mildred Pierce, which we did a while back. He had a real knack for hard-boiled characters and great plots. They've committed a murder. And it's not like taking a trolley ride together where they can get off at different stops. They're stuck with each other and they've got to ride all the way to the end of the line. That's a one-way trip and the last stop is the cemetery. This is a story about an insurance guy who comes across a chance after selling insurance for years to commit the perfect murder and beat his company at their own game. He meets this sultry woman who's the wife of this guy he's trying to sell insurance to. And they have an affair. She's got a mission. She wants rid of her husband. He's got a mission. He wants her. Together, they plot the husband's murder. And pull in a double indemnity clause so they get twice what the insurance company is willing to offer. Originally, they wanted George Raft to play this role. George Raft is such a stooge. He turned down two of the greatest parts ever. He turned down this part in Double Indemnity that eventually went to Fred McMurray, and he turned down the Maltese Falcon and Casablanca, that both of which went to Bogart. Not, not very good choices. He, he had no taste in picking films. <laughs> George. But anyway, they went to Fred McMurray, and Fred McMurray had been playing affable kind of guys, really kind of fun, and he played opposite Claudette Colbert a lot, and Carol Lombard a lot. He did comedies a lot. And they said, and Wilder said, I'm telling you, Fred, you've got a dark side, and you can play this character. And he was absolutely right. Accident insurance? Sure, Mr. Dietrichson. We should tell me what's engraved on that anklet. Billy Wilder had written a movie called Ball of Fire that was a comedy for Barbara Stanwyck. And he loved her. And he went to her and said, I want you to play this woman. And she was an out-and-out -out murderess. And Barbara Stanwyck said, I've never played an out-and-out -out murderess before, Billy. I'm a little frightened. He said, are you a mouse or an actress? And she said, I like to think I'm an actress. He said, well, then show up on the set. It makes you feel pretty good to get away from me, doesn't it? It's only for four days. I'll be back Monday at the latest. To play the foil for both these people who works at the insurance company as Fred McMurray's boss, they cast Edward G. Robinson. Edward G. Robinson, I have to say, was one of the most underrated actors in the world. He was always a total pro. He showed up and brought a presence and and just a style to every single thing he ever did. Huh? There it is, Walter. It's beginning to come apart at the seams already. Murder's never perfect. Always comes apart sooner or later. And when two people are involved, it's usually sooner. There was a lot of sexual tension between these two, and they wanted to create that kind of smoldering sexuality, but they couldn't do it because they had strict censors at the time called the Hayes Office. So what they did was Chandler and, and Wilder wrote dialogue that, that was all full of sexual innuendos. At one point, Fred McMurray, he's just met Barbara Stanwyck, says, you're going to be here tomorrow night? Same time, same place, same anklet? And she says, there's a speed limit in this state, Mr. Net, 45 miles an hour. Really? How fast was I going, officer? I'd say around 90. So why don't you give me a ticket? Suppose I let you off with a warning this time. Suppose it doesn't take. Suppose I have to whack you over the knuckles. Suppose I bust out crying and put my head in your shoulder. Suppose you try putting it on my husband's shoulder. That tears it. It's all sex, but that's the most they could do. And the looks that these two people have to each other is just so provocative. I think I like that. Poor Stanwyck. They gave her probably the ugliest wig in the history of American cinema in this movie. She looks like a sheep in heat. This wig, every time she'd move her head, the wig stayed <laughs> like this. Hope I've got my face on straight. It's perfect for my money. At one point, one of the producers at, at the studio saw this and said, you know, we hired Barbara Stanwyck for this part and we got Prince Valiant. You know? <laughs> Paramount wasn't afraid to get down and dirty, and neither was Billy Wilder. Barbara Stanwyck was nominated for the Academy Award, 
And she should have had it. She was amazing. Edward G. Robinson has never been better at his game, and it's the best thing Fred McMurray ever did. Billy Wilder's adaptation with Raymond Chandler of James M. Cain's classic, Double Indemnity. It's murder. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat.